What's up, brother? In today's video, I'm gonna spend some time talking about the nine traits that I believe every 1% man has. Now, just to preface this video and the content I'm gonna be providing you, this is through my own observation. One of the things that I did years ago when I started on my path towards building my online businesses, becoming an entrepreneur, and really coming to a place where I could figure out what it was that set the successful apart from the ones that weren't so successful was I studied people. I wanted to know what these men were doing different, why they were able to seem to figure it out. And through this process, I realized that they all had these traits. Now, the other piece that I wanna talk on is success is different for everyone. And so because of that, the traits that I talk about on this podcast may not be things that are important to you that are going to bring you to your success. So as a way to make sure that we're on the same page here in terms of what success is, I'm going to give you my personal definition of success. I want to build a life where I have freedom to do what I want, be where I want go where I want, serve who I want, do the things that I enjoy that fulfill me. I want to build a life that serves the community. I want to be able to, and this is different than most, create a life that isn't built around my job, but instead build my job, or in this case, my business around my life. And so maybe my idea of success is a little bit different than yours. But what I found is all the guys who I've observed who share my view on what success is also have plenty of money. They're able to live in their purpose and maintain a certain degree of fulfillment. They don't struggle with their mental health. And they're in this place where they're going against the grain. They're not living according to what society tells them that they should be. They've unplugged from the matrix. And I think that once you really do unplug yourself from these societal expectations of what you're supposed to be, what you should be, and forcing you inside of this box, it really widens the aperture on what's possible. And once you broaden that aperture, you come to the realization that the quality of your life becomes dictated by the quality of your standards. And the higher you raise your standards, the better your life becomes. And taking that concept to the next level is eventually you also come to the realization that what you can create in your life is really limited only by what you believe is possible. And so you come into this place where your success is basically proportional with your personal development. And so then personal development becomes this priority. And this is what's led to me doing this podcast for you is these are the lessons that I've learned and am learning as I pursue what I believe is my ultimate path towards freedom, where I can literally live on my own terms and have fuck you money, fuck you mindset, never worry about what people think and do the things that I feel that I need to be doing so that I can become the best man that I can be, serve people in the best way that I feel that I can serve, and live in a place of ultimate fulfillment and joy. That's my idea of success. But I did want to spend some time before getting into these traits to preface this video and help you to understand that these are the traits of the most successful men that I've found based upon what my view of success is. And in short, that view of success is they have the ultimate degree of freedom. And so the very first trait of the most successful 1% men is they all have integrity. Now to me, integrity is three different things. Number one is personal integrity. Do your actions align with your values? Are you a man of your word to yourself? If you tell yourself, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym tomorrow and you set your alarm, are you the type of guy who hits the snooze button and skips out on yourself? Or are you the type of guy who makes fulfilling commitments you make to yourself a non-negotiable? What I can tell you right now is most men, they focus on the having the second type of integrity, which is integrity with others. 
are you the type of guy who does what you say you're going to do when it comes to commitments you make to other people? And, and a lot of times the reason why men value that so much is because it has such an immense impact on the opinions that others have of you. But if you first focus on developing personal integrity, you realize that having, we'll say, external integrity is just another way that you respect yourself. Having integrity and being a man of your word is not about what other people think of you. It's what you think of yourself. This is how you create that deep underlying conviction in your values and confidence in your abilities is because you know that you're always going to show up and do the things that you say you're going to do, whether it be the commitments you make to yourself or the commitments that you make to others. And the third type of integrity is what I call structural integrity, which is you're not the type of person who buckles, who folds under pressure. You stand in alignment with your beliefs and your values, regardless of what people think or what the external influences are. Now, this doesn't mean that you're a stubborn asshole and you're not willing to accept viewpoints or consider other systems of beliefs. But what this does mean is that if you do make a decision to change your mind, you do it because of your own critical thinking for yourself, not to appease another person. You have character. That's what structural integrity is all about. And this goes into one of the other points that we'll talk about later. But having integrity, I think, is the number one most important trait that a man needs if he wants to become a 1% most successful man. The second trait that I believe every 1% man has is he takes ownership. Not only is he the type of person who takes responsibility for his actions and he takes accountability for what he does or doesn't do, but he's also the type of person who, who recognizes that everything within his space, in his life, in his reality, in his world is his responsibility. If I want something to be a certain way, I make it that way. I take complete ownership over everything within my sphere of influence. And even if it wasn't my choice or my action that caused that impact in my life, I still take ownership of it. This is what a good man does. So let me give you an example, okay? So nearly a decade ago, I went through a pretty traumatic divorce. And this divorce was triggered by infidelity in my marriage. My wife had been cheating. And I remember when I first went through this process, I couldn't help but ask, how could she do this to me? I tried to do everything right. Was I perfect? No. Did I have my flaws? Absolutely. Back then, I would blame my wife. It's her fault I'm here. It's her fault the home is broken. It's her fault I'm traumatized and hurt. She hurt me and I wanted to point the finger. And I remember I went into my divorce attorney's office and I was so emotional and angry and I just wanted to get back at her. And I couldn't help but notice how detached she was. I couldn't help but notice. And I kind of got upset with this attorney because I'm like, and I told her, I said, I'm sure you probably see a lot of guys who are going through what I'm going, considering the fact that we live in a military area, but I feel like you should have a little bit of empathy. And she said, I know exactly what you're going through because I've been through this with so many men. And I can tell you right now, every single one of you comes here, you start out from a place of emotion. And so I'm going to help you cut the line and realize that this divorce, regardless of what she did, is just as much your fault as, as it is her. And I kind of cocked my head back. I was immediately wanting to rebuttal. And she said, you chose this woman to have children with. You chose this woman to start a family with. You opened your door and brought this person into your life. Now you're facing the consequences of making that poor decision for yourself. You're 28 years old and you've been married for 10 years. And so my guess is you got married when you were 18, when you got her pregnant. And now you're experiencing the delayed consequence of that poor decision. There's a lot more context to the culmination of your bad marriage that I don't know about. My job isn't to make you feel good about it. 
my job is to make sure that you are protected as far as your assets are concerned and your children are put into a situation that best serves them. And it kind of hit me in the face. And it just so happened that within the next few months, I actually was brought on to Jocko's book, Extreme Ownership, and it expressed that same concept. You take ownership of everything in your life, right, wrong, good, bad, within your control, outside of your control, because that's what men do. And for me, when I actually started taking complete ownership over my life, I came to the realization that I'm in control over a lot more than I thought I was. And so when you have integrity in your life, you take ownership, it leads you into having this third trait, which is certainty. You have very clear values. You live in alignment with those values. You understand what you want. You have a sense of purpose. You are certain about the impact that you wanna create in the world. You don't have to worry about being motivated because you live in a place of conviction. And to give you another story, years ago, I remember I was on a podcast and if you've read my book, I tell this story. It was with a friend of mine, his name is Will. And at the end of this call, they asked me, Josh, one of the non-tangible things that I think contributes to a lot of your success is the fact that you're just so confident. You speak with conviction. Where does that come from? And my answer was simple. It comes from the fact that I live in a place of integrity. I speak my truth. I'm not here bullshitting you. I'm speaking from a place of experience and conventional wisdom that's come from me making mistakes in my life and learning from those mistakes and then applying fixes, taking ownership and being the type of man that wants to create purpose and fulfillment in his life and, and have an impact on the world. I have nothing to prove to you. I'm here on my path, living in my truth, doing what I believe I am called to do. And because of that, I can deliver to you a message that speaks here because I'm speaking from here. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that's contributed to my success over the past five, six, seven years is I may not be on the right path. Shit, I make a lot of mistakes, but I can tell you right now, I take ownership of my actions. And when I do make decisions, I do it with certainty. I'm not hesitant. I don't buckle. I stand firm in my beliefs and I just focus on doing what I believe the next right thing is. And because I live in that place of certainty, the things that I do are more effective and impactful because I'm not one foot in, one foot out, if that makes sense. If I make the decision that I'm going to do something, I do it. And I don't do it halfway. And that into the fourth trait that all 1% men have is they're deliberate. They're focused. There's no question about where they're going. They have a plan and they're executing that plan so that it can take them exactly where they want to go. If you were to ask the very simple question to most men, what is it that you want? Most of them couldn't answer. They would give you some bullshit half-assed, well, I want my family to be happy. I want to provide for my family. There's nothing tangible that they can measure where they say specifically, this is what I want to create. This is what I want for my life. This is where I'm going. And so let me ask you, brother, how are you going to get to an outcome if you don't even know where that is? You just have this magical fantasy in your mind of what your life should look like, but you have no metrics to measure your success, no tangible outcomes that you're actually measuring against. There aren't any goals that you're in pursuit of, and you're kind of just floating through life, letting it lead you. You're not creating opportunities. You're accepting opportunities that land in your lap. And then you wonder why you struggle with fulfillment and feeling accomplished and proud of yourself. And the reason for that is because you're not actually in pursuit of creating anything meaningful. And the reason you're not in pursuit of creating anything meaningful is because you don't even know what that is. If you really want to create success in your life, you need to know what that looks like and measure it and, and have that very vivid picture of exactly where you're going and then create mechanisms in your life to measure your progress towards achieving that. What are your revenue goals? 
how many clients do you want to bring in this year? What is the goal that you want as far as your relationship is concerned with your wife or your kids? Do you have a specific threshold of time that you contribute to them where you make sure unequivocally you're there? Do you hold yourself to a standard? Are you deliberate? Or are you kind of just letting life lead you and telling yourself, well, I know I should be doing these things and I think I need to do this and not really deliberately on a path. This is so much more important than you think because again, when you have integrity, you take ownership, you're very certain about what you're doing, where you're going, and you're deliberate with taking action towards those things. You're never in a place as a man where you're sitting on your hands wondering what to do next. You don't have the luxury of being depressed. You don't struggle with anxiety because you're living in the moment. You feel fulfilled because you can see the impact that you're creating and your progress towards the goals that you've set. And you're acting as a role model because you're leading as an example for those around you doing the things that you know you're supposed to do. Being deliberate. When I first came into the entrepreneurial space as a fitness coach, building my online fitness company, one of the biggest things that I noticed between the guys who were making money and bringing in clients and doing well and the ones who were struggling is the successful coaches took action now. They didn't sit around on their hands and wait. They didn't ask for permission. They did the things that they know they needed to do to win and they were willing to take that action, even if it wasn't the right opportunity, it wasn't the right time, they weren't in a place where they felt confident, they just executed. Operators execute, winners execute. Men who are successful execute. We get shit done. Losers sit around and wait for somebody to tell them what to do. They wait for permission. They wait for the opportunity. They wait for the next best thing. And because of that, they're always and inevitably going to be in the same place where they are now because they were never willing to step up and take the fucking risk. If you want to be successful, if you want to be the 1%, you need to be willing to execute, take action, be fucking deliberate. And now trait number five that I've found all 1% most successful men have is they have temperance. They have impulse control. They have self-control. These men aren't sitting around allowing their feelings to influence or dictate the actions that they take. They're not sitting around watching porn, watching women shake their asses on the internet. They're not giving away free attention. They understand that their attention is their most valuable asset. Their time is their most valuable asset. And so they have to learn to eliminate the distractions from their life. They're not scrolling on social media. They're acting in purpose and they're eliminating the things that are gonna distract them from fulfilling that purpose. Successful men are difficult to manipulate. And if you notice, social media, the world around us today, television, movies, media, all of it, it's intended to appeal to the impulsive part of you. You see a notification on your phone, your instinct is to immediately check it. And the next thing you know, you find yourself wasting 10 minutes scrolling short form videos. You're, you're scrolling Instagram or Facebook, consuming useless information that offers no value to your growth, your prosperity, or contributing to your success. You have to practice temperance. And the best way to do this, and this is what I've implemented into most of my coaching programs, is no free dopamine. Stop wasting your time on social media. Stop wasting your time consuming movies and television that don't serve you. Focus on educating yourself, improving into yourself. And so in order for us to create a positive relationship of dopamine in our life, we have to develop this one trait that all 1% men have, which is resilience. If you've created a life where you don't accept free dopamine, that means you have to go earn it. And the way that you earn it is by doing hard stuff, exercise, running, sauna, cold plunge, 
You do jujitsu. You have to challenge yourself. You create mechanisms for you to overcome hardship. That's where you get that dopamine. You don't get it for free off of your phone or the internet or the television. And through practicing hard things and implementing hard things into your life, you develop resilience. And so when you go out of your way to do hard things and you overcome those hard things, it develops confidence. Then when you have that high degree of confidence because you have a track record for being able to persevere through difficult challenges, and when the actual hard things come into your life, you've developed that skill of resilience and it doesn't knock you down as far. And it gives you more of an ability to stand up and get back to where you were and then continue progressing when you fall. Most men, they don't create mechanisms for developing resilience in their lives. Then when hard things come, they don't know how to handle it and they buckle under pressure. They're weak. And the reason they're weak is because they live in a soft, easy world that's filled with free dopamine. Trait number seven that all 1% most successful men have is they consistently and constantly audit their influences. I'm not going to allow my mind to be poisoned from the negative mindset perspectives or attitudes of people around me. I'm not going to consume media that brings negative energy and vibrations into my life. I'm not going to allow the opinions of others to negatively impact my well-being. I audit the things that influence me. You as a man are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And so if you're not elevating your network, elevating your influences and auditing the things that you're allowing to come into your space, then you're directly, then you're limiting the potential that you have to develop into the man that you want to be, period. Successful men don't hang out with fucking losers. Successful men do not tolerate negative mindset, gossip. They're not talking about other people. They're spending their time talking about the execution of ideas and they're doing that with other winners. They're not worried about what you're doing. Most times, if you're not within their sphere of influence and in their circle that they've curated specifically for the purpose of their personal growth, they don't even know you exist. And one of the things that I think is hilarious as an example of this is you see these successful people on social media. And it's funny to me because today is an interesting world. I, as a nobody, have the ability to go onto Instagram and directly connect with any person, any person. The value that comes with that is immense. I can get inside of the life and inside of the head of some of the biggest, most successful role models that I have and share time with them and share space with them because of social media. And what people online would rather do is go onto the people's profiles, content or pages that they don't agree with or that they don't like and comment their opinions and troll their pages and talk shit and waste their time there. When the truth is, the owners of those pages, those successful people, they're not even reading those comments. They don't even know those people exist. And it's not because they think they're too good. It's because successful people audit their influences. And the reason why they're successful and the people in the comments aren't is because they're on somebody else's page commenting opinions that nobody asked for. If you are truly successful or on a path towards creating success, the last thing you'd be doing is worrying about what somebody else is doing. You should be focused on creating your success in your life and managing your sphere of influence and your influences. But instead, you're allowing someone off on the internet who you don't know to somehow impact and influence your life when all you have to do is just turn it off. All right, and the last two traits of the most successful men, and I think that these probably should be higher on the list, but they're here. The first is humility. For me, being humble was always hard for me to understand because I thought for the longest time that being humble meant I should be happy with what I have. I should be okay with the status quo. 
there's people out there with less than me. And therefore, what I have been so gracefully given, I should be thankful for. Being humble is thinking that you're less than you are. That's not humility. Humility is two things. Number one, humility is being open to learning. Understanding that everyone, everything out there has the ability to teach you something. Whether that be what to do, what not to do, what you want to be, what you don't want to be. Humility is not thinking that you're better than everyone else just because you're in a different chapter of your life than them. But I also think that the other part of humility comes with self-awareness. You understand what your own limitations are. You understand what's holding you back. You see yourself from an outsider perspective. You're not self-centered and arrogant. You have the self-awareness to realize that this is what I know, this is what I don't know, but most importantly, understanding that you don't know what you don't know. And oftentimes the things that limit us and our self-improvement, our personal growth on our path towards creating success is realizing that there are things out there that I don't even know exist in terms of who I am, what I'm capable of, how to be better, or what's relevant on my path towards becoming the man that I want to be. Being humble is being open to that fact. And not only being open to that fact, but also in a place where because of that, you've placed yourself in a position where you're in constant pursuit of discovering those unknowns. And then the last trait, which I think goes along with humility, is gratitude. You have to appreciate what you have, what you've built, where you are now. One of the biggest things that I've found that's common amongst the most successful men that I know who struggle with self-improvement and continued growth is the fact that they don't give themselves credit where it's due. They're hypercritical of themselves when in fact you should not only be grateful for the things that you've built and what you have, but you should also understand that you're the one who did that. You built that. Take ownership of it. And practicing gratitude paired with humility ensures that not only do you continue to foster this mindset of resilience and self-growth, but it keeps you in a place where you have a positive outlook on life. Things aren't always going to go your way. Things are going to be hard. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be challenging. But I think when you live in a place of gratitude, it helps you to stay focused and on track with the impact in the world that you're trying to create. And so for me, living in a place of gratitude also helps to prevent me from falling into a spiral of depression when things aren't going my way, or I don't feel like I'm making the progress in my life I should be making. You need to work harder. You need to be humble. You need to stay on track and consistent. But at the same time, you also need to be grateful for what you do have. The phrase that I think does a really good job of explaining this is be happy, but don't be satisfied. You can be happy and grateful for what you've built. That doesn't mean you have to settle and be satisfied. You can continue to pursue growth. And so this video today is a little bit longer than most of the ones that I'm doing. I wanted to keep them around 20 minutes or so, but I think this one's gonna be substantially longer. But I do believe that these traits and me explaining the importance of them during this video is going to have a tremendous impact on helping you to not only acquire these traits on your own journey to creating success for yourself, but it could also potentially give you perspective on the things that you may be missing. Again, this list is not all encompassing. My goal was to just give a list of the things that I learned and the traits that I felt were most important based upon my own experience. So do me a favor, if you watch this video all the way through and you appreciated the content, but you think I may have left one or two virtues or traits out, drop those in the comments and explain to me why you think those are things that should be included on this list. And again, my name is Josh Holyfield. This is the Josh Holyfield podcast. I'll be doing these videos for you every single day. So make sure you stay vigilant, stay on track, and I'll see you right here, same time, same place tomorrow. Talk soon.